Hey guys, Luke here. Welcome back to another subscribe video on my channel. In today's video, we're building another cottage on one of my favorite lots here in Windenburg. So initially I wanted to finish my dusty blue hipster house, but don't worry, this will come out soon. But I encountered some issues with the landscaping, so we can upload it this weekend. Well, hopefully this weekend. And so I decided to build a completely new house, which is this one here. And I almost scrapped it because I wasn't really satisfied with how it looked. Because with smaller builds like this one, it's always very difficult to make them look interesting and unique while keeping them functional of course so it's always helpful for me if I know what I'm gonna build beforehand so at least the general concept of the build and I decided this is gonna be an older house which has been renovated by someone who tried to make it bright and modern while keeping as many of the original elements as possible so we have more of the modern elements um, inside and the exterior is still rather rustic so as you guys can see i used the stone wall pattern here which looks rather rustic in my opinion i like it very much initially i wanted to use a brick but i feel like this one fits the build a bit better so this time i didn't want to use too much white and so and so i decided to settle with this light wooden siding here which is from island living one of my all-time favorite packs in the game because you can use it for so many different types of builds, especially the more rustic ones uh, like this one here. So you're probably wondering why I said I wanted to have a modern touch because at the moment the house looks very rustic in my opinion, not, I would say, not any um, modern elements here. But once we move on to the interior, you will see what I meant by that. And as I said before, I tried to preserve, kind of give it a preserved look for the exterior. Like someone bought this house or maybe inherited it and decided to make it their own and try to keep the original aesthetic as much as possible. So as I said before, I almost didn't finish this build at this point here because I wasn't too sure about the exterior, but I'm glad I finished it because uh, now I think it's a very nice house. And of course you can download this, it's playtest and fully functional on the gallery. If you want to place this on the same lot as I did here, uh, the lot is in the description below it's cottage on sea in Wittenberg and if you download this if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to leave a like it's the easiest way to support the channel I also appreciate your comments of course so if you have feedback for me or criticism please feel free to leave a comment but now back to the build so those of you who watch my videos more frequently are probably aware that I tend to overuse certain objects which I try to avoid because it's boring for you guys and it's boring for me as well when I'm building so I try to use objects I use less frequently for example this fence here I think I've never used it it's a debug object from high school uh, from the high school expansion and uh, I really wanted to use it here because it's it matches the rest of the build so it's a lighter wood tone which I think looks very nice here and usually I use like a lot of white or darker wood tones or black but this time I wanted to try something different and uh, this is the result as you guys can see I'm pretty satisfied at this point um, with how the house looks. I also try to avoid the usual cars that I use for my houses so I use this one here from Cottage Living uh, which looks very nice. I also have a blue bike here just to fit the theme. So we have a lot of blue elements, green elements, the brick and the light wood tones here. As you guys can see, we have also a lot of plants outside, but they're going to be even more. And I also decided to add a lot of planted pots here. So this sim living here is probably somebody who likes gardening. So sometimes I like to tell a story with my build or I have a specific type of of sim of character in mind and this helps me when i'm building specific houses because i i try to think what will they need how would they decorate the house and in my opinion this is a really useful technique if you're struggling to build houses for certain characters or if you struggle to give your house any character at all so i'm a builder who does really excessive cluttering and some people like that some don't but what i always try to do is Make sure that my builds are still functional because uh, for me it's rather important that these houses can actually be used by somebody in the game. And don't get me wrong here, I also think it's completely valid to build for aesthetic purposes only. I've also done some builds which are not functional, for example the abandoned, what was it called, abandoned library or stuff like that, or some of my Basically all of my abandoned builds are not usable because uh, they are just to be looked at. And I talked about this in various of my older videos. So um, there's no right way to build. Do what makes you happy. Do what you enjoy. Um, it always depends of course what you're trying to achieve. 
it feels like I'm stating the obvious here. So let's move on with the build. So as you guys can see, um, I used a lot of flowers here and this time I decided to go with uh, white mainly, not too many different colors for the flowers. We also have this nice garden table here with the building parasol, which I think fits the aesthetic of this build very well. And as you guys can see, I'm applying some uh, terrain paint here just to give it a bit more of a realistic look and do the final touch up here before we move on to the interior. So for this garden, I decided to go with a more natural looking garden area. As you guys can see, I didn't want, want it to look neglected. It's always hard to describe for me because I want a garden to look natural, but not completely overgrown. And that's basically the concept for this garden here as well. So as you guys can see, we're now moving on to the interior here. And there's one thing that bothers me so much. It's, it's just infuriating. As you guys can see, we have the roof trim here clipping through the walls. So I'm not sure why this hasn't been fixed yet, but there's so many wall trims, like, excuse me, roof trims clipping through the wall. So even though I found a really easy solution for this problem here, so I just used this debug object here from base game, which is just a brick wall basically. Uh, but this also alters the aesthetic of the build and I don't always want to use that, but I think it looks fine here. I even like it here because it adds an additional detail, which is what I was going for. And we're also going to cover it up with more uh, wall mounted shelves here. So I placed these counters here. I'm aware that they don't really fit the aesthetic here because they have a completely different color uh, than the rest of, of, of the wooden um, objects here. But don't worry, they won't be visible later on. I just used them to place the objects at the right height and make the computer functional because we're going to delete um, the two counters on the left and the right side. And we're going to shrink down uh, the one in the middle so it won't be visible anymore. And to do so, we're going to use, of course, our tool mod here, which is also in the description below as always, if you want to check it out. It's one of my favorite mods. It's so useful for building. Uh, I think I mentioned it in almost every video. So, well, why not this time? So anyway, as you guys can see, I moved the counters out of the way and moved the floating objects where I want them to be on a new counter here, which is a custom counter for which I used one of these wall mounted shelves, which I uh, sized up, I think twice. So this way we'll cover the whole nook and we will have a very nice modern looking wall mounted desk here. So you're probably wondering why I didn't remove the one in the middle. And as I said before, we're going to shrink it down, which I did here. So it's still there. And this way we can use the computer here because you, you can't place computers on every surface. So we need the counter here and I didn't make it too small. So it's still visible. It's very small, but you can still see it on the, on the floor. And I did this because if somebody wants to redo the interior, maybe you want to renovate this house yourself, you can still see it and know where it is if you want to remove it or place it somewhere else, of course. So one feature of this house I haven't talked about is the skylight here. And the skylight is our highlight here. I'm, I'm sorry about that, but it looks very nice in my opinion here. Imagine sleeping here. Um, the angle is almost too steep, but I imagine you can see the stars uh, if you're sleeping here and you're probably going to be woken by the rising sun, which is just a nice way to start your day if you don't have to get up in my opinion. So I really like this feature here. So we have a small living room area downstairs, but I still wanted to have a couch upstairs. So I decided to add one here. I initially wanted to go for uh, a bigger couch, but then I decided to go with the love seat here. So I could use some additional decorations and lights here. Uh, on the left and right hand side of it. In case you're wondering, this coucher is from Nifty Knitting, I think. It's a very nice couch. It has some very nice swatches to it. Uh, also some more neutral ones like this white and black and gray one here. I also added a lot of plants here with it, which I think go very well with the bright aesthetic here and the light wood tones. So what I tend to forget very often is to add dressers or some kind of storage for clothing until the very end of the building process. I don't know, they're not really necessary for gameplay in my opinion, but I add them just because I like to make my houses look a bit more realistic, as I said at the beginning of the video. And for this build, I used, um, these objects here from uh, the industrial loft kit, uh, which I think have also some very nice wood tones here. They don't exactly match like perfectly, but I think they look 
perfectly fine here. So one thing that is a bit frustrating in the game, or at least it was frustrating for me, is that there are so many different wood tones here. I talked about this in other videos as well, but sometimes there are no matching wood tones, not even in the same pack. And it's a bit annoying because they, the, the objects don't really fit very well together. And I read, uh, I think it was in Reddit, um, a post by someone who said, well, it doesn't matter. And I think they are right, it doesn't matter. Because if you look at your room, most objects will probably be made from different materials, different wood tones, have different colors, different shades of the same colors. So I think this is how real houses look. And so I try to embrace this with my newer builds like this one here and spend less time and energy looking for the perfect wood tone and focus more on the general aesthetic um, like I did here with this house. So one thing I didn't notice until I finished building and started editing the video is that I used different wood wooden floorings here for the first and second floor and I'm not sure how this happened but I decided to keep it just because as I said before, this is an older house renovated by someone. Maybe the first floor was alright and the second floor wasn't. And so they had to get a new flooring here, new floorboards, and I think it looks alright. So as I said before, I tried to make this house look a bit more realistic and I feel like this is a more realistic feature. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Also, what you think about using different types of wood tones. And the issue I mentioned before with not having wood tones that match, not sometimes not even in the same pack, which I think is a bit strange. Anyway, back to the build. As you guys can see, we don't have a lot of space here, but I still wanted to use a fireplace. And this fireplace is actually in the right spot. And if you don't know what I mean by that is, I try to align my fireplaces with the chimney just because it makes sense and this time my chimney is on the opposite side of this wall here so it's perfect but I still want the room to be a bit bigger so I added additional three tiles here uh, just to make the room feel less cramped. This house also features a separate toilet which I didn't intend to do it was just more convenient for me to build it this way. So I really like the kitchen we have here because it's very bright. We have a lot of windows here, which I think are from Strangerville. And this time I also added a coffee maker because in most of my houses there is at least one coffee mug. And this time I felt like we need a coffee maker here to make this more realistic. So I added the coffee maker and I was wondering why I don't use coffee makers more often. And usually the answer is quite simple. There's no space because my houses are usually rather small and I need all the counter space I have for the sink or uh, stove and um, an area where sims can work and then we have a fridge as well. So usually there is not enough space for a coffee maker but this time I wanted to use one and the kitchen should still be usable so as I said before this is important to me. So at this point the house was almost finished, I just did some final touch-ups here. One thing I forgot in the video is uh, the light switches which I added later on. They don't do anything but it's an additional detail so hey, why not? So at this point the house was basically finished, I just did some final small details and some decorations here and there. As I said before, this is of course on the gallery so if you want to download it you can of course. My ID is in the description below. As usual, the house is also playtested and fully functional. The only thing that didn't work was our custom desk at first, but I fixed it. Um, I'm gonna upload a short if you're interested how I fixed it and how you can build this yourself. So before we take a look at our finished build here, I want to say thank you. And if you watched the video until this point, why not leave a like? Easiest way to support the channel. Maybe you want to subscribe. And here's the finished build. See you guys next time.